Welcome to this video about descriptive statistics in psychological research. So the key idea we're covering today is that different types of representation are appropriate for different types of data, um, which has been a consistent key idea we've been focusing on. And the areas of learning, you can see I've broken down into a bit more detail. So descriptive statistics we're going to be talking about. Um, and that relates to how we generalize research findings, how we generate graphical representations of data, interpreting um, means, medians, and standard deviations, graphical representations of data again, and just a little FYI down the bottom, while we're not focusing a huge amount of our focus on um, inferential statistics, we are going to touch on it briefly, mostly just to, to explain that there are, there are different ways to look at um, statistic, uh, statistical analysis, um, but the most important thing here is that you understand um, what we're talking about today, so not so much inferential stats. So, um, statistics, just to quickly refresh what you've probably learned in science or maths, these are an essential part of any research. So when you go on to uni um, or onto a career that then requires that you do further research, you're going to need this kind of um, study. So um, they are used by psychologists to analyse and describe data so that we don't just have mountains of data and nothing to do with it. And these are the two types. So again, descriptive stats is what we're focusing on, but you do just need to know what inferential stats is, generally speaking. Um, now statistics are used to describe data in a meaningful way and to help researchers look for patterns in the data because it's really not feasible to present in a research paper all your raw data because nobody knows what to do with a whole bunch of numbers or words. Now data can be presented graphically and also in numerical form. Here we go. So this is what I was talking about. You've got this huge mountain of data and you can see that the, the supervisor of the researcher is saying very impressive but do we know what it means? It's because that researcher hasn't unpacked that data yet and used statistics to really try and understand what's going on. So, descriptive stats. Um, a researcher uses this to organise, summarise and describe data so that it can then be interpreted and you can kind of understand the meaning. Now, these statistics look at three characteristics of data. Number one, distribution of scores. Number two, central tendency. And number three, dispersion. So let's have a, a little look at these in a bit more detail. I'm hoping this bell curve, that's what it's often referred to down the bottom, looks familiar to you. So you would have studied this in maths. And this is called a normal distribution. And you can see that we have our mean in the middle. And you can see that um, this is a graph that represents, I suppose, the, the number of people or the number of responses. And you've got low and high. And you can see that most people have um, scored, or most of the responses are scored closely around the mean. So if we were looking at a class here and their, their results for the year, perhaps the mean score of the, of the class was a C. You would have most of the, the students in that class score around a C. You haven't really got many A pluses or many um, E's. You've got most people kind of hovering around that middle mark. Now, now we're going to look at the positively skewed distribution. Now it's going to seem a little weird because you would automatically think, well, this is kind of going to the left, so shouldn't it be negatively skewed? No, we look at this part here. So this is positively skewed, right? So this is a positively skewed distribution, and this is where you have a large number of low scores. So in a class, this is where a lot of the class maybe didn't do very well. You know, a lot of people got quite poor scores, and you can see our mean is just here. Um, and not many people got very good scores. Okay, so you've got quite a large, um, large portion of people not doing so well. Now, next we have a negatively skewed distribution. So you can see that that um, skew here, I suppose, is in the negative. This is where you've got a, a lot of really high scores, and this is what I'm hoping for you guys this year is that we're going to have a lot of people getting really good scores, and almost nobody getting the poor scores. Okay, so most of the class is going to be clustered around that positive end here. So now let's have a look at central tendency. You would have seen words like mean, median and mode before um, and these are the ones that we're going to focus on. So um, these summarise the midpoint or centre of the data. 
So with a mean, you then, you know, you either add them all together, you divide by the number of scores. Median, you're looking just at that middle score. If you were to rank them all, write down all of the um, responses, you would pick the middle one um, and you would use that as your median. And the mode is the one that occurs the most often. So most researchers, particularly in psychological research, they prefer the mean because it means that no results are left out. So say, for example, you had um, a class where most people got really high scores, but you had one poor student who missed six weeks, they were ill, and they scored really badly on that test. We know from studying maths that that would bring the mean down, right? That would, um, that would change the mean because we're taking into account all of the scores. Whereas, um, if you have these outliers, if there are a few extreme or unusual values in that data, the median is used. Because if we were to put all the, the grades down, you probably have, you know, A, 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 B, 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 maybe 1C, and then you've got this 1E. If we were to get that middle number, it's going to be probably an A, maybe even a B. So that result hasn't totally changed the results like um, a mean would. Okay, so last one, dispersion. This is also called variability. And this is when um, we're talking about the spread of scores. So how different all the scores are. Now we use things like range, but more often in psychology, we use standard differentiation, a standard deviation, sorry. So um, standard deviation is how far on average a score differs from the mean. So um, consider a class that has a high standard deviation, so the results have high standard deviation, it's that there was high variability. It meant that everyone in that class kind of got different results. It was some people got really good, some people got really bad, some people got average, and the results were just all over the place. Um, on the other hand, if we were to talk about low standard deviation, it means that there's low variability. So the, clo the scores are clustered more closely around the mean. So it means that in that class, perhaps you know, most students in that class, maybe they got a B. Most students got a B. There was maybe one A and one C. That would have a very low standard deviation because you haven't got a lot of difference between the scores. So here's a bit of a comic. Um, it's a love letter from a statistician telling his girlfriend that she is three standard deviations above the norm. So she's that outlier. Everyone else is kind of clustered here um, and she's just um, totally above all of the rest of them. Okay, so graphical representation of data. So psychologists attempt to summarize data by using um, frequency distributions, tables and graphs. And you guys would know as well, looking at data and research, it's a lot easier to kind of wrap your head around what's going on by really quickly looking at um, a graphical representation of it. Now, this is that um, point that we've got to now, which is where you just need to kind of get that there's not just um, one type of statistics. We're going to talk now about inferential statistics, and you will use this if you go on um, to uni and you're doing research and you're doing statistical analysis of that research. So this kind of statistic allows the researcher to generalize findings from a sample to a wider population. Now, you're trying to infer from that sample what the population might think or do. And inferential statistics is about, is that possible? Is that feasible? From our sample, can we accurately say that that sample represents the population? So what happened in this study, is that going to happen in the real world? So you're really assessing the strength of the, of the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. And in that case, you are looking for something called a p-value. Um, that's kind of found using statistical programs like RStudio or SPSS, but please don't stress about this. You are more than welcome to do some more research if you're interested. You just need to know that there are um, there is another type of statistics that you could possibly use in the future. So um, here's a bit of a funny comic, just talking about statistics. Hopefully in psychology it's going to be quite painless, um, but it is quite commonly known for being a little bit boring. So if at this point you are really struggling to wrap your head around all of this and you're just, you're just thinking, what do I actually need to know? The, the website here has given this scenario as um, 
as a bit of an example, but in an exam, if you're given a scenario like this, you need to be able to interpret it. So you need to find um, things like the mean, median, perhaps the standard deviation. You may need to talk about what a, a low standard deviation or a high standard deviation might mean. You need to look at a situation like this, um, do that kind of basic statistics, and then pull out what that actually means. Okay, so don't feel like you're going to have to be doing ridiculous amounts of stats. You just need to look at a scenario and be able to unpack what's going on. So for more um, resources and I guess help, as always, please see me or the resources. See you guys.